Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Samir. I'm well. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm very well. Jazakallah khair for joining us today for a very special episode. We're recording, mashallah, video. Today, yes. today I have with me special sister um, Farhat Amin. Mashallah, she is also um, a blog, uh, let's say a podcast host as well, which I'll let you introduce yourself, inshallah, so I don't mess up this whole introduction, inshallah. <laughs> Well, alhamdulillah, I'm sure you wouldn't. Um, but first of all, just like for having me on. Um, I was so happy when you, you know, you contacted me. It's it's really nice to. Uh, I know this is such a cliche that supporting women and supporting sisters, but when you do find another sister who's doing similar work, it's so nice to just you know talk to each other and uh, and and really promote each other's work because I, well, I think you're I think mashallah what you're doing is brilliant alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, so yeah so my I have a podcast it's called smart muslimer and I've been doing that for now two years and the whole inshallah the whole objective behind that is to help sisters to achieve confidence through their faith that's you know get confidence in their islam in their muslim personality islamic identities mm -hmm. and so then what I'll have is I'll have different guests on um, and, you know, talking about issues like, for example, you know, struggles, I think particularly struggles that we have as Muslims living in the West. So, yeah, um, you know, of course, hijab is one of them. But I think, you know, at the moment, I, I'm focusing on love and relationships and the way we view them. And um, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's what I do. And then, so the, the book that I'm writing is, it's called Smart Single Muslima. And, um yeah, and that's that's what we'll be speaking about today, inshallah. Inshallah, mashallah. And I like as well, like you also cover a lot of contemporary issues. So, like even um, to do with feminism, for example, like that's one of the ones that really drew my attention because I'd like to do more like discussions about that, inshallah, as well. So maybe mm -hmm. we can have something else where we talk about issues of feminism yeah. and how it, you know, is Islam compatible with feminism. Mashallah. Yeah, that would be. I I think that is so. I think gender roles. Yeah. There's confusion about that. There's even the whole idea that it does Islam is Islam misogynistic, you know, and is it um, does it you know that we've always we've had that trope of Islam is very oppressive to women for so long, that I think um, as Muslim women I think it's really important we address it inshallah. So yeah, I'd love to do that with you. Inshallah, inshallah. So tell us about this new book that you're writing. What inspired you to write this book, and who is it really aimed at? Okay, so it's a practical guide for single Muslims who want to find a compatible husband in a halal way. Okay. I think that's the, that is what I would like to achieve inshallah through the book because when I have, um, it, it's really interesting. I didn't, um, I, I didn't like mean to, I didn't plan to write this book. It was through um, the discussions I was having with guests and then the, um, my audience, they were emailing me about um, this subject of, um, it, it is it has become difficult for Muslim women, young Muslim women, to get married, and I and I was hearing this quite a lot. And then I thought, well, why? I wonder why that is. And then I was mm -hmm. speaking to my friends and um, others, you know, um, young women that I know through you know through work or through the writing I'm doing, and they were saying, actually, yeah, it is. So I thought, okay, let me. Um, I'd like to understand why now. As you mentioned previously about feminism, when I was researching um, that subject, it, it's interesting, there's an interesting statistic that uh, amongst uh, non-Muslims generally, and women in particular, mm -hmm. they are delaying marriage or they're not choosing to get married at all. And I was thinking, well, if that's happening in wider society that as Muslim as we're all living in, then are we becoming affected by that as well? Um, and so that that was one issue. I, I, um, so it kind of I kind of went on a little trail. I was my research kind of led me one way and another, and then so yeah. So I from from what I can see, and I don't know whether you've noticed this as well that um, because it's a problem, I thought well then Islam must give us a solution to this um, because what's happening is the you know there are certain ideas I think that are um, causing this problem in our community. Mm -hmm. What I you know what I and I'm wondering, as far as adopting, you know, are we adopting un-Islamic ideas, number one? That is, is that causing, uh, is that one of the reasons? And then as a community, as Muslim community, so our families, the masjids, 
what are we going to do to address this problem? Because these are our daughters, our sisters, our friends, you know. So, you know, when, when there's a problem, we don't, as Muslims, we don't just think, okay, I can't do anything about it. That's not an attitude of a Muslim where course, we think, yeah. okay, yeah, that Allah must have given us guidance. It's up to us to then find that, inshallah. Yeah, that's true, mashallah. Yeah, to, to be honest, I've got so much to say on this topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, if I start talking about it, we won't finish this interview. So <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just kind of let you just talk about your book because, yeah, this is this is a topic that, like, so pardon me, when it, when it starts, I have so many things, like, because really there's so many issues from so many sides with this mm -hmm. one, you know, particular issue. And yes. I think there's multiple issues in this issue, like, that's causing yes. this um, kind of problem yeah it's right it's you know what it is it is com it's a complicated problem yes, and the thing is and so there's no simple oh do you know you read my book and you'll get married yeah. that's not what I'm saying in a way I want people the uh, the women who are reading this to actually self-reflect on themselves that mm -hmm. actually uh, is that uh am I making myself unmarriageable now I know that's quite people don't want to may not want to do that and the thing is when you do it you know, no one's saying to publicize your your issues and your self-reflection this is just for you to deal with that and thinking about what could i be doing right have i adopted some un-islamic ideas that are mm. causing a, a, like a bit creating a brick wall that i'm then not able to go over so it really is um uh, a self-guide book as well a self-help book so yeah. an islamic self-help book which you know, I'm going to be giving some very honest Islamic advice in there because I've been, I, I'm not saying I'm an, an expert on this. No one is, but I, Alhamdulillah, I've, I've been married for 20 years. Mashallah. I've read a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes, mm. but I've seen a lot of marriages. This is what's really interesting. You know, when you've seen a lot of people get married, you've seen then some of them get divorced. You've seen some stay married um, and then add to that reading a lot around this subject. Mm -hmm. You can then start to give some good solid honest islamic advice here yeah. and that's what um and, and and don't you think um somewhere that you know prior to getting married it would have been nice to have had some pre-marriage you know kind of islamic counseling or oh, islamic advice definitely i know i, I didn't I really this, get it did you i must to be honest i i, I was i heard from a friend who was living in malaysia when well, she was studying there but she said that they have actual courses um, like pre-marriage courses that that people have to do so if um, anybody who wants to get married has to do this course and they have to pass if they don't pass mm -hmm. they can't get married mm -hmm. so they have that... to this is like you know they have so they have to learn about like the rights of the husband the rights of the wife their responsibilities of you know each gender in, in, the, in the relationship so they have to do that in order to be able to actually have um you know to be qualified for marriage and i think that's really good yeah, I, yeah. So seriously and I think then um, another thing I was actually thinking about um this morning actually was like um because I saw a post on Instagram and it was talking about um like because when uh, marriage is mentioned in like the um Islamic books and stuff like that thick books it comes under the um sections of like um transactions like to do with that business and things like that um and because marriage is a contract so mm -hmm. it's two people and yes there is obviously we, we get married Allah tells us for you know to bring love and mercy between um, the husband and the wife but it's it's more than that there's the, the contract there as well which you have to be I thought that was your phone no it's not I don't have my phone here I don't I'm really sorry I don't know where it's coming from Okay, I, it's not from spoiled, me. yeah, I'm just really sorry, I don't know where it's coming from, so it's not coming from your end. No, so that's, it sounds like a phone, but it's not my yeah. phone. Yeah, and it's, I've got my phone here. I'm really sorry, I don't know what is, um, okay, right, sorry, what we do, should we, do you want to pause the recording for a second? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I really don't understand, I, my <laughs> No. Okay, what should we do then? Should we should we just should we start again? Because I don't know where it It's okay. I'll just I'll just carry on. Um I was okay. talking about You were speaking um, about Malaysia, so do you want to carry on? Why yeah, don't you there. start your yeah from yeah, there? So my friend told me like she was living um she was studying in Malaysia 
and um, she said that um, what she found there was that you know Muslims who want to get married they have to do a marriage course mm -hmm. and they have to pass it in order to be able to get married otherwise they can't get married so I don't mm -hmm. know if there's any Malaysian sisters listening but if they are then you know can you confirm this because I think that's an excellent idea and I think that everybody should have to do that because the reality is marriage is a responsibility and it's mm -hmm. just you know people think about their own rights but they don't think about the rights of the other person definitely I think as Muslim women we really need to know our rights because I think what's happened throughout the century somewhere is that we've lost the like kind of knowledge personally like the, the rights that we're um you know that are entitled to yes um, but at the same time we shouldn't forget the rights of the husband as well because that's where the kind of feminist kind of thing comes in you know when we think like when we're especially us western um muslimers mm -hmm, feminism mm -hmm. kind of yeah. has like distorted our view so it's more me 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 but mm -hmm. you know you still have to think about the other person and there has yeah. to be a balance there so obviously as well for the husband side like you know this is something we hear often with um well i hear a lot from muslim men they think about their rights as well like oh the wife's supposed to do this and this and this but it's like well you as the man what are you supposed to provide because the reality is marriage um is a contract so mm -hmm. both sides are there to provide certain things you know and even in the quran allah talks about that you know allah talks about the responsibilities of the husband he's supposed to provide for the woman you know you're the man is basically taking over the role that her father used to play okay so mm -hmm. providing for her and protecting her all these kind of things that's what the husband's supposed to do now and you're, and you're supposed to obviously like make a family with this woman that you've been married that you're getting married to and in order like once you do that as well the woman she's supposed to obey you yeah that's that's, that's it it's i know it's it's this kind of pre marriage education or pre-marriage you know a knowledge that all muslims so okay i'm specifically speaking to women because that's who i can that's the reality i understand um but you're right men need it just as much as women and because the thing is that what's happening is that we now have a divorce rate of one in three marriages in muslim yeah. communities are you know are ending in divorce and the thing is that it's easy you know um that it's easier to do, you know, do the prep beforehand, get this, that pre-marriage advice that you need. And that's why, you know, in the book, I'm saying a compatible husband, yeah. that what can happen sometimes is, you know, Alhamdulillah, we, as women, we will only look for a Muslim man, that, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. And that's the starting point. That's a foundation where yeah. in the Hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm paraphrasing where he says, look, you know, that the, there's things that, four things that you can look for to marry in marrying a white woman. Mm -hmm. And there's also the hadith about that if a man comes to you and his deen is good, you yeah. know, then you should marry him. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, that's the foundation. It doesn't mean you go, OK, any Muslim man will do. Exactly. And any Islamic guy who approaches my dad, mm -hmm. so, you know, you know, do the nikah tomorrow. Yeah. No, you, there's then things you need to find out. And there's a process, a, a halal process yeah. um, that you follow and you take your time and you understand certain things. And so it's understanding those that's inshallah the advice I, I'm offering in this book and um, what's really interesting is that I've, I've done a masterclass and inshallah I'm going to do a few more it's basically a Muslim marriage masterclass mm -hmm. and the first one I did was I posed the question um, are you afraid to get married um, you know what's making you feel worried or fearful and I'm not kidding Summer I had my inbox was flooded with like to the point um um, with the, the questions sisters had and the worries they had. And, um, and then so I took like five of them at a time because there were too many to do among, I thought I have to do more of these now. And, um, and it was, and so what I decided was in the book, there's definitely gonna be cute chapters or chapter of uh, Q and questions that the sisters have got yeah. and finding the, giving them the answers. Um, because, the, you know, the, I think once you, knowledge is power, Islamic knowledge is power. Yeah. And once they have it, then they'll be, okay, now I know what I should look for, you know. And what's slightly worrying is that, um, like, just like, you know, it, amongst non-Muslim women, and I can actually understand why, they're delay, why they are delaying marriage mm -hmm. and they are not even choosing to get married is because marriage has changed. The, the, the concept of marriage in the West has changed so much, mm -hmm. um, you know, their men don't want to get married to them. You know, they don't, the, the kind of the need to get married has disappeared because of religion has disappeared from their lives. Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, even um, those who say they're religious, they still live unreligiously, you know. Like, I yeah. know a lot of people who say they're Christian, for example, and fornication is not allowed in Christianity, but they still be living like, you know, in sin, as they would call it, you know. Yes. Having children outside of wedlock, and that's become the norm for them. Yeah, that's it. And and it's inevitable that w- for, for, for cis- women living, you know, for, uh, for us Muslims living here, this rubs off because that that whole culture is um kind is um propagated through popular culture as yeah, well definitely. we're watching it in the movies our books mm-hmm. out the music and so w- i think this is one of the things that i'm you know addressing in the book that are why are we allowing that popular culture to seep into our views of what a husband should be like even the whole concept of dating you know mm. you you've now had halal dating yeah. when did that ever exist 10 20 years ago no one if someone says said to you halal dating you say you mad you know you can't do that but now it's normalized yeah subhanallah i still don't know how that works but <laughs> yeah yeah i've had to watch a lot of youtube videos to find out okay so what what does that really mean because it's it's just a, it's like saying halal pork you know what i mean it's <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> you know that's that's like an oxymoron yeah. but the, the problem is because they like th- this is the issues that our sisters are facing that they they're thinking of course I want to get married to a Muslim man but how am I supposed to get to know him exactly, yeah. th- that's and that's a really valid question because they look at maybe their parents or the older generation the way they got married they think I'm not going to do that you know and look some of them are they're not happy but they just stayed married mm. so it's a very good question that they're asking that how can I get to know my, the guy I want to marry before, you know, in a halal way. And what seems to happen is they're thinking dating is the only way I can do it because Islam is so strict or, you know, Islam is so boring and Islam is so backward. Um, but interesting, there are lots of hadith and um, examples of Sahaba, how they got to know each other. Mm-hmm. So that's what we need to, to find out inshallah. Yeah, and I think um, I'm I'm a divorcee myself, so I think another issue with that is that um, there's so much stigma around getting divorced, even though it's on the increase. I think that's probably another reason why sisters are still afraid to get married, because they've got that, oh, well, what if I get married and I'm not happy with this person, and then I want to get divorced, but then it's just like, because, you know, I've noticed now with sisters, for example, who have delayed getting married, for example, till their 30s, Mm-hmm. and then you get married to somebody and then you're not happy yes and you might you you'll know whether you're happy with this person or within the first year of the marriage but mm-hmm. a lot of the time they don't want to get divorced because they've waited till their 30s in order to get married so when you get to your 30s mm-hmm. and you get married then it hasn't it's not working out then it's just like oh well what do I do now because if I get divorced now yeah How's, how am I going to find somebody else again? So that's another like another worry, another concern. And obviously the issue of being able to have children and things like that as well. Because mm. as women, we know that the older we get, the mm-hmm. harder it can become to get pregnant. And that's yes. because, that's another common issue as well um, that people are having. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're right. And, and these are all, like I have, the more I'm speaking to sisters and researching it, I have, I, I, seriously, I do so much du'a for our sisters who, are in these situations because it's it's not um it's really difficult and I think this is another reason why I'm reading writing the book that um when I it, it's you know it's really painful isn't it it's to, to, to think I'm not going to be you know I'm going to be lonely yeah. I'm not going to have someone to share my life with mm-hmm. I I'm not going to have kids these are all uh, it's really interesting that sometimes the blame is put on women um, or so they're kind of painted in a certain way that you're you're too fussy or you're too you're too into your career or you 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 know you need to sort your looks out you know there's that blame put onto women which I think is is um is quite unjust really yes, and yeah. um especially when it's done in a really public nasty way I've mm-hmm. seen that a couple of times but then also then men are blamed Muslim men that oh you're too again you're patriarchal or you're you want to have, you know, like a dolly bird or, you know, you just want someone to control. The, there are these arguments, especially it happens on Twitter a lot. Mm. Um, these arguments happen and it achieves nothing. And the point yeah, is, course. I think like I, that's one thing I'm definitely not doing in this book. I'm not going to blame women or blame my, men. In a way, I'm saying concentrate on the ideas that we're putting in our heads. When, we, when And that's the question. And are we really 
and only the person reading the book can, can know this am I really following Allah's guidance yeah that that's one thing and the thing is that you will have as you know and I know no marriage is perfect you will have problems you will have challenges because you're two completely different people Definitely. but are you going to look to the son of the prophet sallallahu to see mm-hmm. how did they deal with marriage problems mm-hmm. you know, because the prophet sallallahu and his wives mm-hmm. they did argue they you know it's all cataloged isn't it it's amazing um but they found a way they weren't angels but they found a way to um uh deal with those issues and so that's the other thing that if you start off on the basis that I'm going to, my view to getting married, I'm going to take Allah's guidance. And then when I have problems, which I am, um, there's no kind of Hollywood kind of, life isn't a rom-com. Um, but when I have problems, I'm going to deal with it in some way. And if divorce, divorce is allowed, you know, it's not something, no woman wants that. But when you're in a bad marriage, there is a way to get out of it. Of yeah, there's, there's ways to get your families involved. There's solutions there. Um, and so that's it. We need to have a bit of a reality check about are we, how much are we to blame as individuals? But then also, like, I, I think mosques, I know lots of mosques do a lot of, you know, kind of helping and mediation, but I think we could be doing a lot more. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very easy to blame, oh, every, you know, divorce is so bad. And it's easy to complain about it, but uh, what are we going to do to help each other? Because, you know, we're supposed yeah. to be, you know, like one ummah. We, we, we support each other, don't we? Um, so, yeah, so you're right. You're definitely right about the divorce and the not wanting to put yourself into that situation. Um, but, you know, inshallah, may Allah help, you know, all the sisters and the brothers who were mm-hmm. in that situation. Mm-hmm. So um, what would you say your biggest challenge has been in the course of writing this book? there must have been quite a lot since it's oh, quite yes. a big sub- subject okay yeah initially I thought well who am I to write such a book you know I'm, I'm not a shaker I'm not an astada um you know and it was decided that what could I have how can I help sisters kind of imposter syndrome it was mm-hmm. that idea that I thought oh and yeah. I can't I can't write a book like this um, um because the thing is I'll, I'll be genuine the, the motivation isn't money Everyone knows you don't make a lot of money. Yeah, from books. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Um, so that wasn't the, the motivation. But it was, um, but the more, sh- shall I tell you what happened? When I, I was thinking, I'd really like to give um, like a few sisters who I'd been speaking to. Like it was a couple of guests on the podcast, really. Um, I was saying to them, well, I, when I did this, is there any good Islamic book that addresses you know, there's lots of books, alhamdulillah, on marriage, aren't there? There's lots of YouTube videos on marriage. Yeah. And, you know, th- that's, so that's brilliant. Muslims are taking care of that. Mm-hmm. And there's hadith books on marriage. I've, I've got about 10 of them on my book, my shelf. Um, and then, but then the, I think we're facing quite a specific problem in the 21st century in that. I, and, and it's not a problem I don't, I don't, men aren't facing it because as we know, men can get married 30, 40, <laughs> even 50. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is. But women can't. And I really did want to give some solace and advice to um, to, to young Muslim women. Let's be honest, women of all age, really. Yeah. Um, and what I did notice is there were lots of non-Muslim kind of um, self-help guides on, on, on relationships, mm-hmm. not marriage. You know, on, it's basically on dating, on... And, and their perspective is a very feminist perspective that you can just go and do whatever. If you can't get married, you know, it doesn't matter. You can go and sleep around, have hookups. You know, it's like they've solved their problem in that way. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, well, what about us? What about Muslim mm-hmm. women? Who's solving the problem for all these sisters? Um, so the challenge, once I, I realized, okay, if I, you know, there's the um, hadith about if you can, if you see a wrong, you know, if you see an evil, you change it with your um, hand. Yeah. You can speak about it with your voice. You hate it in your heart. Now, this is a, um, well, the way I saw it is this is a problem our sisters are facing. And if I can help them um, and it's in my control, I'm going to do it, you know, in my capability. So that should be, it's my, in my, in my capability. Mm-hmm. And I think it was through <clears throat> the podcast and then through my website, Smart Muslim, I think, if I hadn't been getting emails and positive feedback from women, 
Like, for example, when I first started speaking about feminism, I was thinking women aren't going to like what I'm saying. Mm. But surprisingly, they did. And the the, oh, yeah. the listens on that that topic were, re- were a lot. So I thought, OK, so this idea that, we're so, that suddenly all Muslim women are embracing feminism, that isn't true. It's not. It's um, not so, so even, even non-Muslim women, a lot of them hate the whole idea of feminism because feminism hasn't done anything for us. It really mm-hmm. hasn't. Yeah. Like on the grand scale, it hasn't done anything for us because, you know, even for me, like when I was in um, secondary school before not, before being Muslim and everything, I used to mm-hmm. think like when it, when this kind of a subject of feminism came up, I thought to myself, but this doesn't make any sense to me because it seems like the whole kind of um, premise of feminism is you in order to be like a woman to show that you're achieving, you mm-hmm. you have to prove that you can do what a man does. So that yes. automatically means that men are better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because if yeah, you're yeah. trying to measure your worth according to what men do and you want to show that oh well a man does this so I can do that as well then you mm-hmm. are saying that men are better that's basically yeah. it and yeah they're like the standard aren't they yeah you're not telling women you're not telling men oh well you know you should come and do what I'm doing no you you're telling them I can do what you can do so you're setting mm-hmm. that as the standard Mm-hmm. yes when you do it then you then you feel like oh well you know this has made me like you know I'm an extra special woman I'm I've, I've you know I'm I'm at this kind of level you know mm-hmm. and other women who don't aspire to be doing what men do or what yeah. they're traditionally known to do those women are not achieving anything yeah 100% I agree it's um so um yeah so really the challenge I got over the that challenge of self-doubt and kind of imposter syndrome by seeing the the need for it. And then the other thing was research. I thought, okay, so how am I going to become, like I, this isn't a book where I'm just, I didn't want it to just be my views and my experience, my ideas. I thought it has to be grounded in Islam. Mm -hmm. So Alhamdulillah, and this has been the best part of it for me is that reading, reading books, researching, speaking to people of knowledge, Alhamdulillah, that has helped me improve my understanding of marriage. And then, inshallah, the advice that I can then um, gonna give sisters. Uh, so, yeah, that's been, um, Alhamdulillah, I've really enjoyed that. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So who would you say your biggest supporter has been during this time? Um, it's been um, my audience mm-hmm. and my, my friends. So it's the, the podcast listeners, the um, sisters who visit my website, Mm-hmm. um and then friends that I've speaking to and then the audience what I've been doing as I've been writing chapters I've been sending it to sisters that have got in touch with me who I found you know who asked me about this subject and then I was because I thought I need to make sure it's connecting to them it's yes. it's helpful it's useful yeah. and and then also then the master class as well that a lot of the the answers that I've been writing they're going to be in the book and then that's what I'm offering to sisters in the masterclass. And yeah, that, that's been, the response has been good. And any, any um, yeah, Alhamdulillah, and the constructive criticism, I've definitely been taking on board. Like sometimes yeah. I've gone on a tangent and they've said, yeah. this is totally irrelevant. Yeah, Cut that out. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I needed someone to tell me yeah. that. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So is, um, have you written any other books? And like, and is, is authoring something that you thought that you'd, do like when you was a child is that something you've always wanted to do no no summer not at all I um <laughs> I'd never I'll tell you something funny you know there's this cliche about English teachers because yeah. I used to be a high school teacher that they all want to be secret writers and oh, they've wow, got a okay. book hidden inside them just waiting yeah. to come out and I, I I used to laugh at that because I had colleagues who they yeah they say yeah I'm writing my book and I was like oh, okay yeah that's not nice. I'm doing my marking I haven't got time for that um but um, yeah, so no, I didn't think I would ever be an author. Um, Alhamdulillah. And it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? As you know, because yeah, you're yeah. writing your book. Yeah. Um, but no, I never wanted to. Um, I think I wanted to be a bank manager when I was little. Mashallah. I don't know why. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I actually do know why. I thought the bank manager got to keep all the all money. The money yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when I was little. Yeah. Oh gosh! Mashallah, that's childhood logic, eh? Mashallah. Yeah. <laughs> Very innocent. Alhamdulillah. So, sister, what advice would you give to other sisters who are thinking of starting their journeys? Obviously, you've been in contact with a lot of sisters now, mm. and maybe you know you've heard some experiences from other sisters that 
maybe they feel brave want to write as well what advice would you give to sisters like that number one research mm-hmm. so this is i'm writing a non-fiction book so i'd be honest i'm not so fiction is always you know that's uh, i yeah that's not my subject but with non-fiction research your subject um because you need to make sure you're speaking, you know, like factually you're correct. Yeah. And especially if you're writing on Islam, then you, there's an even bigger, um, you know, responsibility to make sure that you are not saying anything that contradicts, you know, the Quran and Sunnah, because, yeah. you know, we will be accountable for the words we write. So having someone, so for example, if you're writing an Islamic book, um, have some people of knowledge who you can show your t- your drafts to, who can tell correct you, um, and be open to advice. Don't get be too precious yeah. about what you're writing because you know you can write a book. You think, oh no, it's my baby, and yeah. no one can say anything about it. But you can't think like that yeah. um, because you are you're you're going to make mistakes, and you have to take feedback. So have people that you can get feedback from. So whether that's um, yes, yeah, so you need to find those people and, and whoever your audience is, I think it should be those people that you're asking um, advice from, mm-hmm. inshallah. Um, another thing I would say is get an editor. Yeah. So someone who you can, you write your chapters and they can then, so it might be that they're just editing the, you know, punctuation, grammar, spelling, mm-hmm. or if you have someone again, who has knowledge in that subject and can proofread uh, and it's good. I've got, um, alhamdulillah, I've got two people who can do that for me. Um, and then, and again, I, I, I accept their edits. Yeah. I don't say no, because if you did that, then that's silly. If you give it to them yeah. say, no, I don't like that. I don't, you have to trust them. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, inshallah, I think those two will help you with the writing process, inshallah. Inshallah, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much, sister. I really appreciate this wonderful um, talk and this special video episode. It's been really exciting to see, and I'm really looking forward to reading your book, inshallah. Oh, inshallah, and yeah. So, I think inshallah, I think all the other millions of single Muslim women. <laughs> I look forward to reading it too, inshallah. I yeah, in, inshallah. I know it's. I think it's probably going to be out. I'd like to have it out by the end of this year. But what you can do is you can um, you can get if you'd like to have updates. Mm-hmm. If you just go to smartmuslima.com, that's without a H. Smart. Oh, I'm sure you put the link in the um, yeah, yeah, bio. Um, and you can go there, and then you can get onto the wait list. And um, yeah, and and you can you can stay updated, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah, mashallah. Okay, jazakallah khair, sister. Thank you so much. Okay then. Okay. Inshallah, we'll speak again soon. Take inshallah. care. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam.